Hello, I'm Dr. Pratik Chowdhury, and this video will be about hypoglycemia. So I'm a senior lecturer and consultant at King's College Hospital in London. So the learning objectives of this video will be that by the end of this session, you should be able to understand the definitions of hypoglycemia and how maybe hypoglycemia on the Libre might be slightly different. Define impaired awareness of hypoglycemia. Know where to look to find hypoglycemia on the different reports and recognize the common patterns that can lead to hypoglycemia, and then be aware of the pathway for management of patients with problematic or recurrent hypoglycemia. So the first thing is to define hypoglycemia and look at what definitions are used by clinicians uh, and by patients. So here you can see a trace where the blood glucose has been high and is drifting down and is showing a glucose reading of five millimoles per liter, but with a downward arrow. So although some people can get or feel their glucose falling and get the symptoms at these uh, higher glucose levels, this isn't really understood to be true hypoglycemia. But we have to remember that in this scenario where there's a downward arrow, sometimes the, skit, the glucose in your bloodstream might be lower than what your sensor is showing. And if you were to do a finger prick at this time, your finger prick glucose may actually be below four millimoles per liter. So if you feel low, and the sensor is showing a falling glucose, it's often sensible to double check with the finger prick reading and make sure what your real glucose is. If you're not yet low, so in this scenario where your blood glucose is showing a five with a down arrow, it might be useful to take a small dose of carbohydrate, maybe between five or 10 grams, which would be about one or two jelly babies or dexter tablets in a view to preventing hypoglycemia. A blood glucose of less than four or 3.9 millimoles per liter has been called an hypoglycemia alert value. This is a level where you should take action to avoid any further drop and be aware that your blood glucose again could be lower than what your Libra is showing. If you look through the different recommendations for hypotreatment, the common education course Daphne would suggest that if you're between 3.5 or 4, you should take between 15 and 20 grams of rapid acting carbohydrate. So this is about 150 mils of leucosate or orange juice or three to four dextrose tablets. If you feel low and the sensor does not show this, then again, you should double check with a finger stick reading. Below 3.0 millimoles is defined as serious hypoglycemia. And the reason why there's that change in importance, if you like, is because below this level, we know that there's some slowing of brain function. Some people might feel a bit confused, have difficulty speaking, look a bit imbalanced. Some other people may not feel they're getting those symptoms, but experiments show that if your blood sugar is below three millimoles per liter, your brain is slowing down, you are having some impact of it. Repeated episodes below this level can increase the risk of severe hypoglycemia needing third party assistance. So again, if you've got a sensor reading below three millimoles per liter, you should treat urgently. 15 to 20 grams of rapid acting carbohydrate, which, as I said before, is about 150 mils of leucosade or orange juice or three to four dextrose minutes. It's important if you've treated a hypo that's this low that you recheck in about 15 minutes to make sure that treatment has worked. With CGM, of course, we now get the glucose data moving backwards over the last eight hours. And often people might wake up and find a scenario like this where the blood sugar has been below three for a long period. And so with CGM, there's a new a category of hypoglycemia, if you like, which is prolonged hypoglycemia. And that is defined as a, as a sensor glucose below three millimoles per liter for at least two hours. Again, I just want to re-emphasize that there is a between five to 15 minute lag between blood glucose in your finger and blood glucose on your sensor. And that means if you've got a downward arrow, you can get, and that lag can be more. So there can be quite a difference between your real blood sugar and your sensor glucose at hypoglycemia. Sometimes the Libre reads lower and you might, and it might be telling you you've got a hypo when you don't, whereas other times, particularly when the blood glucose is coming down, your sensor glucose might be falsely reassuring. You might think that your glucose is four or five when in reality it might be lower. So in that scenario, again, if you're not sure, it always makes sense to finger prick and double check to be sure. So to summarize the definition part of things, there are three key definitions to be aware of. The first is the alert value. If your sensor glucose is below 3.9 millimoles per liter, you should treat uh, and consider that you might be hypo or you're very close to one. Anything below three, we call um, non-severe symptomatic hyperglycemia, the ones where you can treat, but they haven't impaired your cognitive function. These are readings above three. 
And then severe symptomatic hyperglycemia is ones where you've had a low glucose that can cause cognitive impairment or confusion, and you need someone else to help you out. You, you're not in a position to treat that hyper yourself. And that's what people call severe hyperglycemia. Now, with the Libre, you're getting a lot more information than you would have done with your finger pricks, even if you're doing a lot of finger pricks per day. And what we've found is that there's a lot of sensor glucose um, that you'll find that's low. In fact, if you look across a population, maybe one in 10 or one in uh, between 10 and 20%, so that's between one in five and one in 10 nights, will have lows uh, on CGM. And you only pick these up when you scan. And two, two to five percent of those nights, so that might be as much as once a month, you will have prolonged hyperglycemia where the sensor was low the whole night. Now, actually, if you put a Libre sensor on someone without diabetes, you also see these low sensor glucose. And there's a little bit of discussion whether some of these hypos might not really be real. You may have you may come across scenarios where the sensor is read low through the night, but your finger prick has been okay. So we have to interpret these um, overnight hypos with a degree of caution. In a recent study from uh, Denmark, um, studies uh, patients who we knew had very good warning signs of hypoglycemia usually about, were unaware of about two-thirds or 60% of their CGM hypoglycemia. So when we've got those CGM hypos, we've got to be able to work out which one of those are true and which ones aren't, and be aware that we will see some hypos, and our job is to work um, and try and minimize those. So when is hyperglycemia too much? If I'm saying that we're going to get some hyperglycemia, which may or may not be true, how much is too much? And a lot of the consensus amongst people who look at a lot of these traces is that if you're clocking more than 10% of readings below a glucose level of 4, that's too much. Most people who've got really good diabetes control have got an A1C of 7%, and have warning signs of hypo, have between five to seven percent, five to eight percent of the readings um, under four, and they generally have less than five percent below three. That's the dangerous one, of course, when you're getting a bit of confusion. We must also remember that if you can't recognize your hypos that well, if you have impaired awareness of hypoglycemia, then the same amount of hypoglycemia, that five to ten percent, may put you at much greater risk. Once we know what we're looking for, the first step is to find where to find the hypos on the, on the download. And in the next few sl um, slides, I'm just going to go through what different pages in the report tell you about hyperglycemia. And different views appeal to different people. So the first page you might get on your report is this one. Um, and on the front page, it will tell you there, as you can see, the percentage of readings below hypoglycemia. So this particular individual um, has got 12% readings below 4, which suggests he's getting a lot of hypoglycemia. The second uh, report here gives you a bit of picture about when in the day they're happening. So what this report does is it puts all the days you've got um, between midnight to midnight. So you can see here, overnight you're getting a lot more hypoglycemia, whereas in the day there's very few red dots. So this suggests um, that the night events are longer and lower, and then there's a few short daytime events um, which are shorter. Another view is this one. And, and um, as you'll have gone through some of the other slides that tell you what these different things mean, you can see here the light blue portion or the gray portion overnight is just dipping below three millimoles per liter. This means that at that time, which is, uh, if you look on this tracer, that's between um, four and 6 a.m., at least 10% of nights, this person is experiencing hypoglycemia. Um, you can see here, that the traffic light system there provides an at-a-glance information about the risk of hypoglycemia, and the parts where there's a red light suggest that's where you should look to find hypoglycemia. And then at the bottom of the trace, it gives you some common causes of high variability uh, that could lead to hypoglycemia as well. One of the other reports is this one, and this again, can, you can see that um, that median line, that dark blue line, is taking a deep, uh, a sharp downturn there in the evening. Now, when the median is taking a sharp downturn, that means that that's something that's happening very frequently. Often, um, particularly if it's in a post-meal scenario, that, or, or at the end of the day, that can mean there's a correction bolus there. Um, and although you can't really confirm that on this view, it might mean that you should go into the daily traces and have a look whether you, this person is having to do a lot of corrections then, because that average reading or that median reading has got a sharp downturn. 
Um, overnight, you can see these dots there in the overnight period are quite long and flat, and so those could represent something where the glucose is low through the whole night, and might indicate that on those nights there was a bit too much background insulin overnight. Daytime hypers tend to be much shorter. If there's lots of red lights, of course, red lines there, of course, it means that you're getting lots of hypo at that time of the day. And you can see here there's a whole bunch of red lines there overnight, but then also towards the end of the night as well, suggesting there's a lot of hypoglycemia at that time. Um, as I've said before, these long flat hypos potentially related to too much background insulin, or and it could just be for those nights. It could be because that person is doing exercise or drinking alcohol on some nights when you're getting a long prolonged hypoglycemia. Short brief hypos that you get in the day are often related to corrections or the end of boluses um, and, and so more likely to be related to quick acting insulin. There's a view here and you if you just look across that and have a look at where the days in which there's a red block, it gives you an idea of how many days in the month you've had at least one hypo. And so this individual has had 17 hypos in the last 29 days, which is more than 50% of the days. So again, you'd think that's a rather high level of hypoglycemia. Let's see what's going on. You can then go over into the daily traces where it tells you, shows you every single day uh, and it puts a week at a time. And again here you can see these long nighttime hypos. In this scenario though, um, whereas you might often think that a long nighttime hypo is a background hypo, you can see it's coming off a big correction. So in this case it's suggesting that the overnight correction for instance may be a bit too high. You can see here in the day you've got some shorter daytime hypos um, where the glucose uh, dips down a little bit and comes back up again. And this suggests the patient might have quite good warning signs because he's scanning when he's low and treating. You'd then look and see how far up you go the other side to see whether you're over treating or not. Uh, and again, if you look through the different days, you can just see different types of hypo um, that people might, might see. So the common causes of hypoglycemia could be overnight, mainly related to inadequate reduction of basal if you've done exercise or alcohol or drink alcohol that night. In the day, and if they're following a high reading, it could be overcorrection of high glucose. Or sometimes in that scenario, it might be, st it might be due to stacking, where you've given some rapid acting insulin, your sugar's gone high, and then you've taken another dose to bring it down again, uh, or for another meal, and, and that's brought it down. And again, uh, at post meals, it could also be if you've overestimated carbohydrate. Now, some people who have had repeated hyperglycemia don't get the usual symptoms or hormone responses that raise the glucose, leading to impaired or reduced awareness of hyperglycemia. And if you can't recognize your hypos when you drop below three, that increases the risk of severe hyperglycemia needing third party help. And so as you can see, if you're hypoglycemia aware, then you should generally get your symptoms somewhere around about 3.5 millimoles per liter, but you don't get confusion until you drop below three. But people with hyper, who are hyperglycemia unaware, that gap between when they recognize they're low and they get confused is too small. So often they're too confused uh, to realize that they're low um, and that can increase their risk of severe hyperglycemia. So can we use CGM to diagnose hyper unawareness? Um, a lot of people get concerned that the sensor might be reading below three and if they don't feel it, they might be hypo unaware. And the short answer is no. And that's because as I said earlier, even in people who we think have got good warning signs of hypoglycemia, they are unaware of up to half to two thirds of the CGM hypos. So CGM picks up a lot more hypoglycemia and we really need to work out what those mean. In some studies, the rate of hypoglycemia uh, seen in hyper aware and unaware is the same, and so we can't really use CGM to differentiate. So CGM is useful to find out where the hypos are happening, but not that useful to define hyperunawareness. The way clinically people uh, define hyperglycemia awareness um, are these two questionnaires, in fact, that a lot of places have used. The first one is called the gold score, and it asks a simple question. How well can you detect the onset of hyperglycemia? If you score one or two, which is most times or almost always, that means you've got um, normal awareness of hyperglycemia. But if you're scoring uh, five, six, or seven, where seven means never, then that indicates impaired awareness of hyperglycemia. The Daphne program asks a different question, slightly simpler, if you like, which is when do you usually detect your hypos? And if, you, if that's usually above three millimoles per liter, you've got normal awareness of hyperglycemia. If that's below three millimoles per liter or never, then you have impaired awareness of hyperglycemia. So finally, if you're having a lot of hypos, your CGM is picking up a lot of hypos, and you think you've got impaired awareness of hyperglycemia by those questionnaires, 
what should we do? Uh, problematic hyperglycemia defined by NICE is where you've lost your awareness or where you've had recurrent severe hypos needing someone else to help you out, or repeated or unpredictable hypos that's having a real impact on your quality of life. We know that Daphne itself can restore awareness in about 40% of people um, who've got impaired awareness and can significantly reduce the rate of hypoglycemia. Insulin pump therapy is approved by NICE for people with problematic hypoglycemia. And in certain areas, you can also get access to continuous glucose monitoring, um, which can alarm if your blood sugars are too low. Uh, some people can get access to insulin pumps that are connected to sensors, uh, sensor-augmented pump therapy that has also been shown to reduce the rate of severe hypoglycemia. And so again, if you've lost warning signs, have a word with your clinical team because you might be, it might be suitable for you to use a, a sensor with alarms or an insulin pump. So I'm just going to finish off with some uh, practical examples here. So this is a, a, a scenario where you can see the day before on Thursday, um, the patient had a hypo in the afternoon and then went to bed. Overnight, the glucose dipped down um, and was pretty flat overnight. So what could have caused this? You've woken up with a kind of low drift down with a low reading in the morning. And actually what had happened was the person had had a couple of glasses of wine that evening with the meal. Now, if this was happening regularly, you might think you might want to reduce the overnight background insulin. If they'd done some exercise the previous evening, you might think that you want to drop your basal on the days, um, the nights after you've had some exercise. Again, um, a similar sort of scenario, you might actually be waking up with this long flat hypo. If this is happening too much, you, want to, you might want to reduce your background insulin at that point. The other common scenario you might be getting is about three hours post-meal, your blood glucose, you, you had a high blood glucose, so you took an extra correction dose. Now this is called stacking, where that correction dose didn't take into account the amount of insulin you had on board for your meal itself, and this can lead to hypos. And so with a Libre, if you have scanned when your glucose is high and you've taken a correction, you need to take into account the amount of insulin on board, and you could use that by thinking about an app, or if you're within four hours of a previous injection, make sure you only take half the usual correction you take. Some of this stuff is covered a bit more in the, set, in the video on arrows. Finally, there's a bit about preventing hypoglycemia. If your blood glucose is below six and dropping, have a think about why it's dropping. Have you done any exercise? Do you have some insulin acting before? And if you're below six millimoles per liter, you might wanna think, uh, of taking, if you've got an oblique arrow where it's dropping slowly, taking about one jelly baby or four to five grams of carb. And if you're dropping more rapidly, you might want to take two or three jelly babies just to prevent that hyper before it happens. So finally, identify the cause of hyperglycemia. Think about basal bolus ratios. If you've got a lot of background ratio, background insulin, more than 60% of your total daily insulin, then it might be that you've got, you might want to drop that. If you're taking a lot of boluses, that's more than 60% of your dose. Uh, it might be that the hypos are related to correction um, insulin. Think about overnight hypos, exercise and alcohol. Um, early, the ones early in the night might be corrections post evening meal, whereas the late ones might be related to background or exercise and alcohol. Um, look at your time in hypo. Although anything up to 10% below four is okay, we'd like to get that down below 5% and we'd like to minimize any time below three. Although we know we will get some of those long nights and avoid, try and avoid prolonged hypoglycemia where you've been below three for more than two hours. So have a look at those days and see what's happened. Even people with good warning signs will get some silent hypos. Don't be worried. That does not mean that you've lost your warning signs. Just look at how often that's happening. Are they real hypos? And consider the reasons and just therapy. For those with hypoglycemia unawareness or those who've had severe hypos, have a word with your clinical team. Um, you might A CGM system with alarms or a pump might be more appropriate. Thank you.